Christmas. My name is Jody Pritzel. I'm the author of Immigrants, Ornaments, and Legacies, the story of American-made glass Christmas ornaments. You know, my grandmother had what we call shiny bright Christmas ornaments, and I was always fascinated by those. Over the years, I started collecting a few. Look at my tree. Okay, I've got a few shiny bright ornaments. I got curious about where they were made and when they were made and who made them and so I started researching the history of American made glass Christmas ornaments and that's why I ended up with the book. But today, you know, my first videos about the book and about American made glass Christmas ornaments were so serious that I said I just wanted to do a fun video. So today as I'm finishing up decorating my shiny bright tree or as I like to say my corny bulb tree, I'll tell you a little bit about the ornaments. They go all the way back to Germany, the history of making glass ornaments. And the first question I get asked is, in Grandma's box of ornaments, where did they come from? So the first thing to look at is the cap. Don't be afraid, you can pop the cap right out of your ornaments. You take a look at that cap. So this first one, you can see it has the long prongs and it has a slit in the top. That ornament, if it has that cap, now they're switched between boxes, right? Because these are generations, 50, 60, 70 year old ornaments. If it has this style of cap, chances are that your ornament came from Poland or Czechoslovakia. If you have this itty bitty little tiny cap, it's circular with a tiny slit, chances are that that ornament was manufactured in, Germany, uh, in Japan after the war. If you have this ornament, this style of ornament with a plastic cap, what you've got is a West German made ornament. And it's going to have the plastic cap on it. And chances are it's going to also say West Germany. So that's the first tip on when you're looking at your ornaments to, to put them on the tree or identify what you've got is look at those caps and decide where the, com where the country of origin was typically. Now I'm going to get into the caps a little bit more when we talk about corning glassworks because really they're corning bulbs. And corning glassworks made all the bulbs that we would call shiny brights, even though there were two decorating firms. There was Max Eckhart and Shiny Brights, and then there's George Frankie out of Baltimore, Maryland. And those two really were the major customers for corning glassworks. Now Corning Glassworks perfected the light bulb machine. There's all kinds of stuff in the book about that. I'm going to leave that for another history lesson. Just let me share with you that Corning made round bulbs first. And this is an original Corning glass bulb from 1939. So last year was the 80th anniversary of Corning making glass Christmas bulbs. I think that's kind of cool to hold something that's 80, year, 80 years old in your hand. Corning made those bulbs, and then when the war broke out, um, silver nitrate became in short supply. So, they started making these bulbs. It's transparent and it's beautiful. It also says, made in U.S. of A on the cap. So if you've got a cap that says, made in U.S. of A, you have got yourself a fine there, because that's going to date it to pre-war. Let me hang this on the tree because I think it's super cool. It just shows nice on that aluminum tree. You know, here's a little trivia about aluminum Christmas trees. They came around in the 1960s. Most were made in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And Corning will tell you that 50% of all the bulbs that they made in the in mid-50s, when aluminum trees came out late 50s, were solid colored. They weren't decorated because people wanted to show off with the color wheel that's going. They wanted to show off the solid color bulbs. The war keeps getting tougher and tougher. So after silver nitrate, is, you can't get any silver to nitrate the bulbs. Then, believe it or not, you can't even get metal caps. So if you're lucky in your box of ornaments to have one of these, good for you. Good for you. These are cardboard caps. And you can see how there's different styles of cardboard caps. If you find these, they're getting harder and harder to find. So these are precious, not going to hang them on the tree. 
Corning was making round bulbs, and then they decided that maybe they should try some experimental shapes. So here is an experimental shape Corning and a Corning, okay? These are from 1942. I am going to hang this one on the tree, and you know why? Because I've got a spare. Chances are that I have a spare of a few bulbs. Let me hang this on the tree. It's Until the color wheel pops tonight, that's probably not going to look all that cool, but... I like it from the nostalgia of being 1942. Luckily, the war ends and Corning can get back into full production. Now, here's where the story gets super cool. Max Eckhart and Sons makes shiny brights. George Frankie and Sons makes their ornaments in Baltimore, Maryland. How do I know that? Well, you can take a look at your ornament. If you have a scallop cap that looks like this and it says Made in USA, you probably have a George Frankie ornament. Now again, could be swapped, tops are swapped, all kinds of crazy things happen, but if you've got a scallop cap, chances are you've got a George Frankie. If you have a corrugated cap, chances are it's stamped shiny bright. And you can see it on the edges how different it looks than the George Frankie. So that's your first tip off. Now there were rivals, because Max Eckhart had, oh gosh, he had 50% of the market, George Frankie had 25% of the market. And it was kind of crazy, and, and let me show you the themes that you'll see when you start looking at ornaments. Here's my favorite bulb. I, I don't know how many of these in different colors I've got on the tree. It's called Merry Christmas with Scroll Work. And I just love this bulb. I, I just When I started collecting Shiny Bright ornaments, I just wanted every color of the rainbow of every one of these Merry Christmas with Scrolls. So let me give that a place of honor in the front, because I just think that one's super cool. Now, Max Eckert has his Merry Christmas with scroll work. George Frankie has his version of Merry Christmas. So you might have in your box of Grandma's ornaments, you may have this Merry Christmas, you may have that one. They're made by two different, they're decorated by two different companies, but they're both made by Corning. Let's give George Frankie and the company their due. Now, by the way, Max Eckert and George Frankie uh, were both German immigrants, and that's why the book is called Immigrants, Ornaments, and Legacies. Let's give George's due. Um, hang him right about there, okay? Twist him a little bit. There you go. Here's, here's how the rivalry goes. They both actually end up using the same merchandiser. They're decorating the same exact bulbs. So let's talk about if in your box you've got three wise men Bethlehem here in the right hand, and you've got three, Bethle uh, three wise men in Bethlehem in the left hand. So this one, if you look real close, has the scalloping on it. It's a shiny right. If you look closely at this one, it's got the scallops. It was decorated by George Frankie. And again, people generically call these shiny brights when actually they're both corning bulbs. I like gold on the tree. I think gold makes it pop. So we will put one of the wise men here, and we will put the other one in a good spot. How about over here? Now it really gets kind of cool when they start getting into the whimsy of, of introducing different shiny brights. And I talk about all the different styles and give them names. This one is called the Toy Scene. And don't you just love that pink color? Now pink was a popular color and it was introduced before turquoise. The original colors were blue, green, red, silver, gold. Now this one, pink, I just love that. The toy scene with the teddy bears, that one's, uh, that's, I think that they got a little whimsical. You know, we were coming out of the 40s, and ornaments got to be so fun, and then people wanted different ornaments each year. Let me put that one right here. It'll show off really well. The reflectors. Now here's, this is a little bit of trivia too. This is a 19, oh gosh, this came out of the, Sears sold these, so Sears Wishbook sold these. That's a single reflector, and it dates before Corning. This one is called the double reflector. You can see it has two different reflectors on each side. This, 1950. These come in all kinds of different colors. They're, they're really neat, too. I think that's a neat bulb. Let's hang that one up there. I like it too because it has a bunch of different colors. Whimsy again. This one, Jingle Bell Lyrics. So lyrics, if you have an O Come All Ye Faithful, chances are you've got a George Frankie. 
This one is a Max Eckhart decorated shiny bright, and it's got the Jingle Bell lyrics. Max's font is a little bit more modern than George's. So again, I think this one is super cool. We'll hang him. Ah, uh, let's put him up here. Nursery rhymes. I get asked a lot about nursery rhymes. This is Little Bo Peep. I've got Jack and Jill, uh, Cat and the Fiddle, Humpty Dumpty. Here's a little piece of trivia about the nursing, uh, nursing rhyme, nursery rhymes. I don't think they were ever sold in a set. So if you're trying on eBay to find a whole set of nursery rhymes, good luck. Because what I've been able to document is that each one of these was sold individually in an assortment. Now assortments were introduced because the price of a dozen glass ornaments was 60 cents when they were sold in assortments and then when we get to shapes they're sold for a dollar sixty. So that is kind of an interesting twist too is the market size grows but little Bo Peep, Humpty Dumpty, you're probably going to have to buy them as singles or you'll have to just scrounge around in your local antique dealers. I spent an awful lot of time here in Denver at the Brass Armadillo. Shameless plug. They haven't sponsored that, but I spent a lot of time at the Brass Armadillo picking up ornaments that I sometimes break also, by the way. Let's put that one, the Little Bo Peep. We're going to put that one in the front, too. That's the nice thing about artificial trees. You can kind of bend them to your will. That was 1952 on the Little Bo Peep. Crazy shapes come into playing. You've got the mushroom shape. You also have a Christmas tree shape. These are some of the classic shiny braids that you'll see um, sold in boxes. I like this one. I like the simple colors. Um, but this one, this one always is a little nostalgic too. So let's put that one here. We're filling up that tree, aren't we? Whew. Deer scene. If you look at a deer scene, you'll also see some elements that you might see in what I call the Christmas village scene. You'll see the snow repeats. You'll also see the tree repeats. So they just added a deer into this, and that was done in 1952. So the deer scene will look nice, like I said tonight, when that color wheel's going around. Uh, let's see here. We're just going to tuck him back here. I know that's a little bit... A little bit difficult. This one, uh, Silent Night with Church, 1958. You just gotta love this ornament. I have this in several colors, blue, green, red. I like its shape. It's a Max Eckhart, Silent Night, 1958. Classic, classic shiny bright ornament. Remember the heyday of shiny bright ornaments is the 1950s. The companies end up getting sold. Max Eckhart sells out his uh, Shiny bright firm in 55, but I'll get to that in just a second. The last one I want to hang on my tree has also got special sentimental. You know, it was called the barrel first, and this one is called the carriage lamp. When you look at this ornament and you look at probably late 40s, you're going to see a silver nitrate single color bulb that's called the barrel. They modernize it and put the frosting on it. Okay, so this one dates to 1958. So at least that one's a little bit smaller because we're running out of room, huh? Let's just uh, let's just tuck that barrel right there. Oh, I'll call it the carriage lamp for now. We're just going to tuck that one in there. So that's just the tip of the iceberg that I could go into uh, boxes. I could do a whole video on boxes that I just want to share with you. This is the box that everyone asks me about, too. The classic Uncle Sam shaking hands with Santa Claus. This box dates to 1946. At least that's what uh, the Henry Ford Museum and Dearborn and I have been able to document together, is that we're saying this is introduced in 1946. I think it's a great box. It's the box my grandmother had, but it's not my favorite. My favorite, my mom found two of these at an estate sale, and I just love it. When Max Eckert sells on his Shiny Bright Company in 1955, his son Harold stays on with the company, and it's Harold that introduced the 1958 box. So 
I love this box because I love the way it showcases the ornaments. 1958 on this box, and I think it's it's just a great box. So I like to put my boxes underneath my shiny bright tree, and that way you can also see the different ornaments if you've got a whole box of colors. But I just want to share that one with you. If you love vintage Christmas ornaments and want to learn more, gotta recommend Golden Glow. Golden Glow of Christmas Past, goldenglow.org. It is this incredible collection of people that are experts on vintage Christmas. you got to go there and, and learn about Christmas and people that collect everything that has to do with Christmas. A lot of these shiny brights would have been bought at Woolworths. If you really want to learn about Woolworths, Paul Seaton, the Woolworths historian, has a whole Woolworths museum online. Woolworthsmuseum.co. So go check that out. I hope you enjoyed today's video on just a little bit about how you can identify and date your shiny bright ornaments. But remember, they're technically corning bulbs. They were decorated by Max Eckert and Sons and George Frankie and Sons in Baltimore, Maryland. But whatever they were, they're still collectible today and cherished by everyone that, that has them on their own trees. Thanks for watching and Merry Christmas. Thank you.